Okay, uh, now we have collected the sample, dried that specimen, curated it, we have mounted the sample. We also have a spare flower which we need to dissect, dissect it to find out how many sepals, how many petals, how many anthers, how many ovaries, and how many ovules are there in that flower. This information is critical to identify the specimen to the genus and family levels. Without that information, it's almost impossible to identify or group the specimen to the, the genus or family levels. So to do that dissection, what do we need? First of all, we need a fresh flower. Remember I mentioned that you collect some spare samples, put them in a plastic bag with a bit of a paper tissues and the water and put it in the fridge. That will last for, some of the flowers will last for one to two weeks. So you can uh, leisurely dissect them one to two weeks after collecting the samples. But make sure that they go into a plastic bag with a little bit of moist tissue and then it stays back in the, uh, the fridge and that will probably can use that flower for one to two weeks depending on the nature of the flower. So assuming that this is the fresh flower which you just collected and uh, now you need to dissect. Flowers like this, you don't need any tools but it's always better to have something and minimum you would have this uh, the dissection kit. I think most all the students will have this dissection kit and within that what we need is a pair of scissors, then sharp pair of sharp tweezers and a pair of uh, blunt tweezers and a needle, sharp needle. This one, this one, minimum you need two pairs of the tweezers, one needle, one pair of uh, uh, the scissors required to dissect the flowers. And also a scalpel with a scalpel blade, I think it's missing from here, uh, would be also necessary to do the cross section to find out how many ovules are there in the flower. So a, a magnifying lens, something like this, which can magnify the objects up to 10 times, should be enough to deal with many flowers. If not, then you just put them aside. When you come to the residential school, you can use the microscope to dissect tiny flowers. So that way you don't have to sort of worry about the microscope and uh, settle with these tools. That should be more than enough to get the basic information needed for plant identification. Okay, the flowers like this, they don't require any special gadgets. And what you need to do is, first of all, assume that they're all just assuming that you're looking at the flower like this and the flower and you need to pull out each part of the petal, sepal and the anther and count them and record those parts and that's, that'll be your, uh, the exercise. So in this case, for example, we have the flower which has got a, a stalk here that's called pedicel and these are the sepals, the green ones. So number one, what I would do is, I'll just pull that one away. So number one, just play, put them all around. One, two, three, four, five. So there are five sepals. You write, write down K equals five, right? So you've done that. One part of that is finished. The next one is do the same thing with the petals. Pull one at a time. Just hold this one here. One, two, 
two, three, four, and five. So that is, so you got, you have completed the second part, the petals, P equals five. Usually the petals and the sepals, either they equal or double the number of uh, uh, the sepals. So it varies from uh, uh, the taxa. Now we have the two other parts, the male and female parts. The male parts, they are the anthers, which you have already sort of experience this one in uh, living systems. And in this case, most of the time, the anthers arise from the base of the flower. In this case, it's a special case where they are sitting on, on, on top of uh, the flower on, on a special tube called staminal tube. So you can see that each one is an anther. This, each one is an anther with the the filament and the the top the orange bit on top so in this case there are lots of anthers if the anther number is more than 10 you don't have to say that more than 10 that's more than enough and if they're less than 10 you need to count them accurately and record 5 6 7 whatever the number you need to keep a and a precise account of all the anthers if they are less than 10. If they are more than 10, you just say greater than 10. So now, what I am going to do is, I am going to remove the anthers using that whole tube, so I can tweeze this, use the tweezers, take that tube, the anther tube or the staminal column, and uh, peel that one off. Right, so that is the male part which I'm peeling off and the white part, that is the female part. I'm going to separate the male from the female. So this is male, it's a staminal column where the anthers are sitting on top of the staminal column. This is the female part, right? So now I'll put this one up. This female part has got the ovary and the style, the white part is the style and the stigma. Ovary, style and stigma. And in this case, you need to count the number of stigma segments. How many segments are there? In this case, there are five segments. Those five segments, that counting those segments are also important. And also look at the shape and the texture of those stigma because that is the characteristic of some species as well. So, so now we have the four parts, the sepals. There are five sepals. There are five petals, lots of anthers, more than 10, and the ovary is here. And you need to make sure if the ovary is superior or inferior. So in this case, if the ovary is sitting above that junction, so this is the, the junction here, or the base, the receptacle. If the ovary is sitting above that, the base, it is a superior ovary. Be buried underneath, and then, the, then that will be known as the inferior ovary. Okay, so the next, the last step is 
we need to find out how many seeds are there within the ovary. To find that one, you need to take a cross section of the ovary and then see how many seeds are there and the, how those seeds are attached. So you use the scalpel to cut, take a cross section and look under the microscope or if the fruit is large enough, you should be able to see the placentation. Just like in tomato, you should be able to see the how many chambers are there, how the seeds are located. So this one is too tiny for the camera. I'll put it under the microscope. You should be able to see how many chambers and how the seeds are located. Okay. Okay, so now you can see the cross section of the ovary and you can see there are five chambers, right? The seeds are located in chamber one, chamber two, chamber three, chamber four, chamber five. There are five chambers and the seeds are attached to the center. You can see that they, this one is attached to the center. So you note down how many chambers are there if possible, and also note down how the seeds are attached to the center of the, the ovary. And many a times you won't be able to see the, the attachment, that's okay, but at least you should note the number of chambers, that information is required. And if you can't see the, if you don't have a large enough flower, if you can't see that uh, uh, the chambers, it's okay, don't worry about that. Most important thing is dissecting, collecting the information on the petals, sepals, anthers, and the ovary, especially the ovary position is important, and then getting the number of chambers is secondary. It's not that critical. Don't worry too much if you can't see any chambers. That finishes with the dissection of the flowers and collecting the information required for identification. So let's move on to the identification.